Joe, perhaps if I could start by asking you, the City of London Investment Trust, what does it do? In other words, what's its objective? Its objective is to grow investors' income and capital over the long term. And since 1966, we've increased our dividend every year. The directors are also very mindful of providing an above-average yield. And so we aim to do that as well. And how does it go about achieving that objective? What's the investment philosophy, if you like? Well, we predominantly invest in UK large-cap equities. We also have some exposure to medium-sized companies as well. In terms of my investment style, I'm a fairly conservative person and it's invested in a conservative way and I'm looking for companies which I think can grow their dividends over the long term. So I'm looking for well-financed companies with some competitive advantages in their business activities. And in terms of where you can invest uh, and uh, limits, do you follow a model or an index or how, how do you choose the stocks in the portfolio? Well, the UK stock market is the second largest in the world. By far the biggest stock market is the US stock market. Um, But the UK is the second largest, so we have a wealth of um, good companies to invest in. And many of our biggest companies are, in fact, multinationals, so they're not very dependent on on the UK economy. Um, So in terms of um, the companies we invest in, they are multinational companies. But we are allowed to invest up to 20% in overseas-listed companies. So... Currently, we've only got about 7% overseas listed, so we're, we're predominantly in, in the UK. And in terms of the size of the portfolio, how many stocks would you normally typically hold? Uh, well, we hold currently around 110 holdings, um, which is probably at the upper end of our range. But, you know, the, the portfolio size is, is quite large. And by having a, 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 a 110 stocks, it not, enables us to have smaller holdings in companies which... Um, might be less liquid to actually buy into and where sometimes we don't have high conviction in the short term. I mean, I'm managing on a value basis, so I'm looking really for companies that are undervalued on a medium term basis. And sometimes these can be slightly out of favour for short term reasons. So I may not have high conviction and might want to have a small, smallish holding initially. Um, But by owning them in the portfolio, you know, one keeps them on the radar screen. And I'm convinced in, on a long-term view they pr- provide good value. Sometimes it's hard to t- know exactly where the turning point is. Uh, just thinking about the, the length of time you hold stocks for, I mean, what is the t- sort of typical holding time? How, how much is the portfolio turned over, would you say? Well, it's a really, we're low turnover fund. The turnover, average turnover is between 10 and 15%. It's an average of purchase and sales in terms of the whole, whole portfolio. And so, you know, we, we are longer-term investors, and sometimes with very successful holdings, they grow to a big size, and we might reduce them a bit rather than, you know, because they're, they're very large and we don't want to take too, too great a risk. But, um, but, we, but we, te- we like to run our winners um, if they're in good companies. And so, you know, we, this is not a company that, um, not a portfolio that gets churned at all by any stretch of imagination. And in terms of uh, choosing stocks, do you do all of that work yourself or do you have a team behind you that works, uh, um, works on it? Yeah, I work with a team. I've worked with two, two senior colleagues, James Henderson and Alex Crook, worked for, for many years. And then we also have Ben Lofthouse, who have worked for the best part of 10 years, and Laura Fowler. They're the main uh, people who work on the portfolio. But I'm an 11-man global equity income team at Henderson's. And in terms of the, the, the underlying companies in the portfolio, I mean, presumably you meet those companies before you make an investment? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I think for me, the... Um, numbers are the most important thing and it's really share price valuation. I'm trying to look at how the shares are valued in particular dividend yields, particularly important and correlating that with the prospects of the fundamental prospects of the company and you can sometimes invest in a in a company, a lackluster company but very cheaply I mean that proves proves to be a good good investment. Um, But I do like to meet the managements of the company and probably um, certainly at any stage I would have met the chief executives of of the companies that um, we invest in but I don't necessarily feel I have to see them every year. Probably during the course of the year, I probably see about a third of the companies in the portfolio at some point during a 12-month period. And in terms of um, uh, the risks of investing, I mean, all investments carry a risk when, when, when you invest in them. What would you say for an investor the key th- considerations are from a, a risk perspective of investing in the, in the trust? Well, I mean, equities obviously do go up and down. There's no question the equity market, you're taking on more risk, but, you, you, but you, with the potential of, of more reward, I mean, that's certainly my portfolios tend to be quite conservative. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I, I like to be in well-financed companies. Um, so, and also companies that pay attractive dividend yields. And at least with a growing dividend flow, that does offset some of the risk of um, falling markets because the investors will continue to get 
um, dividends fr from, from well financed companies. And do you use gearing in the trust, or borrowing? Yes, we do use um, some gearing. I mean, the gearing range over the years has fluctuated between around 5% of the low point to 12% of the high point. Um, I mean, certainly given our portfolio is, is a kind of more conservative end, a bit of gearing in rising markets is helpful to performance. And we do have some fixed borrowings, and also we can borrow very cheaply um, on floating short-term rates at the moment as well. So we use a combination to finance the gearing. City is often described as a core investment. What, do you, what does that mean? Well, I think a core investment is an investment you tend to keep and hold. And I think because of our growing dividend flow over the years and the fact that we have very low charges, our ongoing charge ratio is around 0.45%, which is amongst the lowest in, any, in the whole active farm management industry. Um, we are seen by many people and a good long-term track record of be beating the FTSE All Share and being performing well in our sector, we, we are for many people a, a core holding which um, and where, where, you know, particularly for British investors to have a, uh, a core investment in the UK stock market is, is a sort of natural choice and then they tend to trade or kind of buy and sell themes and other parts of the world. And finally, uh, could you just sum up the key attributes of the City of London Investment Trust? Well, we provided above average yield. We have this long-term track record, longest of any investment trust, back to 1966. We have low charges. I've managed a portfolio since 1991. It's done on a conservative basis, and we can't um, claim to outperform every year, but on long, over the long run, we've outperformed. And obviously, I'm going to work very hard to make sure that continues. Joe, thank you very much. Thank you.